Rolex, known for its luxury, precision, and lasting elegance, goes beyond just being a brand to represent a legendary status in the field of watchmaking. With an impressive valuation of approximately $8 billion, this iconic Swiss watchmaker traces its origins back to a touching tale of resilience and ambition. Rolex's journey, which began with the steady determination of a young orphan, whose victory over hardship is proof of the human spirit. From modest beginnings full of loss and sorrow came a visionary youngster who dared to dream greater than his circumstances. This is the remarkable story of Rolex, a tale in which creativity, determination, and a constant striving for perfection set the groundwork for a multi-billion dollar dynasty. Hans Wilsdorf, the visionary behind Rolex, was born on March 22, 1881, in Kumbach, Germany. His parents, Anna and Johann Daniel Wilsdorf, raised him alongside two siblings within a family that managed a moderately successful iron tool business. Tragedy struck early with the loss of his mother in 1892 and his father a year later, leaving Hans orphaned at the tender age of 12. Hans was placed in the care of his mother's brother and then admitted to the renowned boarding school Ernestonem Coburg in Bavaria, Germany. Adapting to the unfamiliar surroundings proved to be challenging. He struggled with feelings of isolation, frequently experiencing social exclusion because of his religious beliefs. However, this challenging situation led to the development of a deep sense of independence and responsibility within him, laying the groundwork for his future pursuits. Even with difficulties, Hans demonstrated extraordinary academic skills, particularly excelling in math and languages, displaying a strong passion for French and English. His interest in languages would later be extremely beneficial in his professional life. While in school, he became friends with a classmate from Switzerland who shared tales about La Chaux de Fonds, a city known for its strong history in watchmaking. This encounter ignited Hans's intense love for watches and the complex craft of making them. Hans took a bold step away from his boarding school routine to embark on a new path. He landed an apprenticeship at an international pearl exporting company, gaining valuable business experience and a steady income. However, Hans desired larger opportunities, relocating to Geneva, Switzerland, a dream he had for a long time. He became part of Kuno Korten, a renowned watchmaking company, launching his career in the field, leveraging his proficiency in English acquired during his schooling. Hans assumed roles as an English course correspondent and clerk, tasked with the daily winding of pocket watches, offering him crucial insights into watchmaking. Unfortunately, his time at Kuno Korten was cut short by military service obligations back in Germany. After fulfilling his duties, Hans relocated to London, England, where he contributed significantly to another esteemed watchmaking company, focusing on expanding sales. It was during this period that he met Florence Francis May Croti, whom he soon married. In 1903, at the age of 22, Hans Wilsdorf moved to London, where unfortunate circumstances befell him as thieves stole his entire inheritance of 33,000 German gold marks during the journey. Despite this setback, he persisted in his ambition to establish his own watch company while engaging himself in the English watch industry. Two years later, at 24, Wilsdorf crossed paths with Alfred James Davis, an unexpected encounter that would change the course of both their lives. Davis, possessing the necessary capital entered into partnership with Wilsdorf, who brought his extensive watchmaking experience from Kuno Korten to the table. This partnership was further solidified by Davis's marriage to Wilsdorf's younger sister. Combining resources, Wilsdorf borrowed funds from his siblings to match Davis's investment, resulting in each holding an equal 50% stake in their venture. As complementary partners, they leveraged their respective skills, with Wilsdorf focusing on watches and Davis excelling in financing and international trade. Together, they established Wilsdorf and Davis LTD, sourcing a Bosch from Jean Aglaire, a company based in Bienne. Focused and determined, Wilsdorf and Davis embarked on their journey, producing two distinct timepieces, a pocket watch and a purse watch, catering to both men and women, respectively. At 
the time, wristwatches known as wristlets were limited in number, size, and accuracy, primarily worn by women. Men were hesitant to wear wristwatches, comparing it to wearing a skirt. The watch industry doubted wristwatches' durability for active use. However, Wilsdorf, driven by innovation, observed soldiers during the Boer War adapting pocket watches to their wrists due to practicality in battle. This insight inspired him to venture into an untapped market, leading to Rolex's specialization in wristwatches. In 1914, Rolex achieved a significant milestone by earning the first ever wristwatch chronometer rating from Switzerland, followed by a Class A certificate of precision from London's Ku Observatory. These accolades cemented their reputation as a reliable brand. However, World War I brought new challenges as the British government imposed a 33% tax on companies exporting goods internationally. To navigate these hurdles and mitigate anti-German sentiment, Hans Wilsdorf relocated the company headquarters from London to Biel, Switzerland in 1915. In 1908, Wilsdorf struck a groundbreaking deal with Jean Agler in Bienne, securing the largest contract for watch movements of its time. Concurrently, the trend in trademark and logo styles prompted Wilsdorf and Davis to reconsider their branding, recognizing the need for a name that transcended language barriers and was easy to remember. They rebranded to Rolex, similar to Apple's universal appeal in the tech industry. This move, like Apple's detached association with computers, positioned Rolex as a versatile and memorable brand. As wristwatches surged in popularity, Rolex emerged as a timeless icon, surpassing mere trends. In 1926, Hans Wilsdorf's dedication to progress and technology led to the impressive introduction of the Rolex Oyster. This groundbreaking watch was a turning point in the watch industry for being the first waterproof wristwatch in the world, thanks to its perfectly sealed case. In 1927, Wilsdorf's cleverness was once again demonstrated when he took advantage of a chance to exhibit the abilities of the Rolex Oyster. He recruited London swimmer Mercedes Gleitza to wear the watch around her neck during her swim across the English Channel. Channel. Even with the difficulties of the swim, the Rolex Oyster survived without any damage in the cold waters, demonstrating its strength. This occurrence sparked the interest of the public and helped Rolex gain worldwide recognition after a well-placed ad in the London Daily Mail. In order to strengthen Rolex's brand image, Wilsdorf implemented creative marketing strategies, such as displaying Rolex oysters in fish bowls with live fish at authorized retailers. This innovative method not only emphasized Rolex's status for being waterproof, but also confirmed its position as a famous brand in the field of watchmaking. Hans Wilsdorf's innovative marketing strategies continued to shape the trajectory of Rolex's success. In 1928, he orchestrated a collaboration with Evelyn Lane, a leading British model of the era to showcase Rolex watches. Lane was featured wearing a Rolex timepiece inside a fishbowl, effectively reinforcing the brand's reputation for water resistance. In 1933, Rolex gained further acclaim when its watches accompanied a crew attempting to fly over Mount Everest, emerging unscathed after the rigorous journey. Renowned driver Malcolm Campbell added to Rolex's prestige in 1935 by setting a speed record of approximately 300 miles per hour while wearing his Rolex, highlighting the brand's durability and reliability for everyday wear. While receiving these endorsements, Rolex continued to advance in innovation. The year 1931 saw the launch of the Rolex Oyster Perpetual, a watch that was noteworthy for being both waterproof and self-winding, representing a major progress in watch technology. In 1945, Rolex introduced the Datejust, the first wristwatch to indicate the date of the month in the dial through a window. The brand solidified its legacy even more in 1953, when they launched the Submariner, a watch made specially for divers. Built to handle submersion to 330 feet or 100 meters, with a rotating bezel for measuring dive times, the Rolex Submariner became a celebrated watch, establishing benchmarks in diving timepieces and demonstrating Rolex's dedication to quality. Rolex continued its tradition of crafting watches tailored to meet the needs of professionals across various fields. The GMT Master, introduced in 1955, was specifically developed for pilots, allowing them to accurately track multiple time zones. In 1963, the Cosmograph Daytona entered the scene, becoming the favored timekeeping companion for racing enthusiasts 
due to its precise chronograph functions. The Explorer, introduced in 1953, was designed with adventurers and explorers in mind. Notable figures like Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay relied on Rolex watches during their historic ascent of Mount Everest. This association with daring endeavors further solidified Rolex's reputation for durability and reliability. Rolex's century-long journey embodies the remarkable resilience and vision of its founder, Hans Wilsdorf, who transformed from an orphan teenager into the architect of one of the world's most esteemed watchmaking enterprises. Hans' unwavering determination laid the groundwork for Rolex's enduring success, marked by a steadfast commitment to innovation, precision, and reliability. Today, Rolex watches transcend their realistic function serving as emblems of accomplishment, distinction, and enduring elegance. With a legacy spanning a century, Rolex stands as an enduring symbol of horological excellence, captivating the world with its unparalleled craftsmanship and timeless allure.